We're here at the Albany Museum in Grahamstown to look at the baboon spider collection that they've got here for our baboon spider atlasing project. This is a very important museum, it houses a very important collection because this is where John Hewitt was based and this is where he was working on southern African baboon spiders many decades ago. So uh, here we have the Albany Museum Therofossid Collection. Um, yeah, and Dimitri are busy working their way through to uh, uh, digitize all the information uh, with the aim of including this in the Spider Atlas for South Africa. And one of the important things with museum collections is the amount of old material that we have. So several of these are collected in the early 1900s and they still have the original labels of, the, of John Hewitt who we've done the collecting. So it's important resource for historical records, historical distributions, um, and we can compare that to uh, modern distributions and see if things have changed over time. Uh, that's one of the roles that uh, museum collections play. Uh, another role, of course, is uh, keeping type specimens to make sure that we have comparisons. They can always make sure we are working with the, with the same species that we think we are. Um, and the importance of digitization, uh, you know, trying to get this information out there, a lot of these spiders, uh, before Dimitri and Ian arrived, have not been worked on since the 1970s and in some cases since even before that. Um, that information, therefore, the people who, the people who were working on the collections had that information in their heads. They have now passed on, so that information is lost unless we can get the information and make it accessible. Um, and there are too many groups for one person to do that for everything. So we get a couple of people in, we get some, some of the material digitized and we'll include all online where it's accessible for people who are interested in it to, um, to use and hopefully some good science and other things will come from it. So an important role that digitization plays is uh, creating backups of, our, of data and uh, creating data that's stored in multiple places. Um, if you have a catastrophic event and for some reason um, the catalog of your data is destroyed then you can never get that back. So we have problems in our collection because in 1945 there was a large fire at the Albany Museum and several of our catalogues were burnt. So we have specimens that we managed to save but not all of the, of the accompanying data. Um, if something like that were to happen in the future, at least with our data backed up on servers and made available through various digital means, we come to a point where uh, we, have, we will always have the data to use. So it's, a, it's an important role that uh, not only accessibility but safety of our data The Baboon Spider Atlas has two main thrusts. The one thrust is to get new photographic records submitted to us from the general public and to collect new records in the field ourselves. But an equally important and parallel thrust of the project is to capture records that already exist in museum collections. We've been here at the Albany Museum for two days now. We've managed to sort through all the material and finally get it to a point where things are identified, sorted, and labeled. So these records are now going to go into the Atlas database. They're going to help us to understand distributions of baboon spiders in Southern Africa. And overall, it's been a very worthwhile visit to the museum. We found some really important specimens while we've been working through this collection. The Albany Museum has good representation of the baboon spiders that occur down here in the eastern, uh, southeastern parts of South Africa and of particular interest to us have been these common baboon spider species, so-called common baboon spiders, but often not very common, that occur down here. The one particular group has been the Namaquensis group of species, where we're trying to understand whether it's one species or several distinctive species, and the other group has been the Tigrino guttata group, which occurs in the Transkei and down into, Grand, into the Grahamstown and Port Elizabeth areas. So here we've seen some really good samples. It's helped us to understand those groups of spiders a lot better. And I think it's going to lay a platform for moving forward and actually sorting out what's going on with spider diversity.